defining a graph. So by a graph I will mean two things. There is this uh, set of vertices is a vertex. Okay, you cannot have <laughs> vertex set and edge set are disjoint sets. And a mapping at most 2. <coughs> For example, As I said, psi is any function that associates uh, each edge with a pair of uh, vertices, uh, not necessarily distinct vertices, not necessarily distinct. What matters for a graph theorist is a drawing of this. One should be able to draw this. How do I draw this? Let us go one by one. The first edge is saying that V2 this, this is B2. In 4. Okay. 
So, that is a drawing of that graph, that is a drawing of that graph. We make uh, some more definitions. If E is called a loop, then these are called multiple edges. So, is there a loop there in that graph? Yes, which one? Even is a loop. Are there multiple edges there? E 4 E 5 is a multiple edge, E 4 E 5 is a multiple edge. <coughs> now, as we said in the previous hour, the whether you allow loops or you do not allow loops in a graph depends on what you want to do. This simply <laughs> depends on what is it that I want to achieve out of this. Any theory that I try to learn in mathematics ultimately I have to have a goal in my mind. What is it that I want to achieve through this? So, if I am really looking at the problems such as the problems of matchmaker that uh, the matchmaker wants to have as many boys and girls paired off as possible, then there is no point in having situation of a loop. But if I am going to look at topological questions such as drawing of a graph on a plane etcetera, then there is a point in allowing, allowing loops, multiple edges etcetera etcetera. So, which parts of graph theory investigation will allow us to have loops multiple edges and which will not, there is no point in having loops or multiple edges depends ultimately on what is the frame under which we are working. Okay. If the frame under which we are working, it is not necessary to look at loops, multiple edges etcetera, then we can get rid of them and it should be possible to get rid of them. So, one more definition. without loops and multiple edges, E is called a simple graph. So, that graph of course, is not simple, it is not a simple graph. In fact, most graphs will not be simple, <laughs> it is clear because the, which kinds of uh, graphs would be simple. That is a simple graph, that clearly is a simple graph. that graph is not simple, that graph is simple. Uh, incidentally, I will be using the letter capital G to denote a graph always, all the time, <laughs> all through this course capital G is reserved for graph. 
Also, we didn't say that, but the, that's what we have in our mind. Namely, these sets, capital V, capital E, are finite sets. They're finite sets. When they're infinite sets, it leads to a different kind of graph theory, which we don't want to look at. And for the time being, we don't want to look at it. So V and E both are finite sets. <coughs> and uh, so that is a simple graph. That is a simple graph. Or for that matter, any polygon, any polygon in the plane will give me a simple graph. That's a graph of what should be called skeleton of a square. Those are the vertices and the edges. That's an equilateral triangle. How about something like this? Is that a simple graph? How many vertices does it have? Eight vertices. How many edges does it have? Count. There are 12 edges. There are 12 edges, four at the bottom horizontal, four edges at the bottom, four at the top, and four edges that are vertical. Okay, making a total of 12. This is a, f a famous graph called the cube graph. Is there anything special about that drawing there? For example, could I have drawn the same thing this graph the same as that graph? It is. This graph is same as that graph. What way are they different? Their drawings are different. They are different drawings that is all. But drawings don't really matter for us. Graph is specified <laughs> as soon as the vertex set is known, the set of edges is known and this function which tells you what are the vertices at the end of an edge? So, if E these are called end vertices. So, loop has only one end vertex. Okay, the same vertex is end vertex. Loop has only one end vertex. Whereas, sort of what we would want to call normal edges, non loop edges, will have two end vertices. They will have two end vertices. Could I have uh, made a different drawing of that graph? Is 
is this graph same as that graph it is okay those are just different drawings is that, is that clear so this graph is also cube graph all right there are different drawings of the same graph and sometimes once you have made a drawing <laughs> you forget about the graph and just look at the figure of the graph and call it the graph itself is the is that clear that this distinction between graph and the figure of a graph is uh, is of a notional nature it is it is exactly like you see you're not uh, i learned this later when my son was in school so instead of uh, <laughs> you don't say you don't say that the angle is 30 degrees you say measure of the angle is 30 degrees there is a difference between that difference for us is only of a notional nature the angle has its existence only because of measure how much is the angle equal to how much is the measure of that angle otherwise it doesn't matter for us so it is the same thing graph exist for us in so far as you can draw them all right therefore we'll say that this is graph that is graph etc okay and there should be no problem with that is that clear okay the this example of a simple graph is this is what is called cycle cycle of length 3 this is what is called usually we denote this by c4 cycle of length 4 or for that matter I can have a cycle of any length cycle of length 5 these are all simple graphs they are of course simple graphs When a graph is simple, things become easier. In terms of uh, counting, etc., things become much easier. Also, simple graphs form uh, a very important class of graphs. Namely, many times you can prove all the theorems for simple graphs and then say that they extend to uh, other kinds of graphs also. Therefore, you can make a statement in the proof. So, you can begin your proof by saying that without loss of generality, let me take this graph to be a simple graph etc etc gives an edge. Okay, some more things that we need to fix. I will always use the letter small n to denote the number of vertices. Uh, there are two 
possibilities. I will use small n. Some books in graph theory use uh, a small letter p to denote the number of vertices. p is also another popular choice, but I will use small n for the number of vertices. <laughs> also, it is a very standard graph theory language that V is incident with or at the edge E. V and W are adjacent vertices. Adjacency for us is a symmetric relationship. It is a symmetric relationship that is clear from the way that is done. If V and W are adjacent, W and V are also adjacent. Though of course, uh, it is not transitive. <laughs> it is not, not at all transitive. Uh, yeah, I mean V5 and V3 are adjacent. V3 and V4 are adjacent, but V5 and V4 are not adjacent. So, it is not a transitive relationship. Also, whenever you have a loop, the vertex is adjacent to itself. Okay? So, with this uh, terminology, that terminology, the complete graph is a simple graph in which you have adjacency between every pair of vertices. Every two vertices are adjacent to each other. Every two vertices uh, are adjacent to each other. The fact that it is a simple graph means you have no loops at all, no loops, no multiple edges. Therefore, if I take two vertices, there can be at most one edge between them. Between them, I can have at most one edge. It may be there, it may not be there. Okay? But the requirement for a complete graph is that every possible edge has to be drawn. Is that clear? So, that is what the requirement for complete graph is saying. How many edges would a complete graph have? Huh? N C 2. That is clear. So, number of edges N, cho N choose 2. Have we already drawn complete graphs here? Is that a complete graph? That is a complete graph. Is that a complete graph? No. Why not? Yeah, because uh, that is not an edge. That of course is not a complete graph. What about complete graph on two vertices? Is there a complete graph on two vertices? Yes just a single edge. What about complete graph on four vertices? That is a complete graph on four vertices. <coughs> what is the idea here? Those two things are intersecting here, but there is no vertex here. That is only, I claim that that is a drawing only. So, I have to understand it clearly. There is no vertex here. There is no vertex of the graph there. Complete graphs are denoted by 
the capital letter K. So, K n So, with that uh, terminology, this is K 3, this is K 2. What about K 1? Single vertex, no edge. That is K 4. which is not a complete graph? This? Single vertex is, it is a complete graph. Yeah, yeah. It's satisfied. It's, it's a simple graph. It's not a good example of, <laughs> of a graph, I can see it. I mean, we have to bear with uh, such kinds of uh, elementary things in topology in graph theory for quite some time. Okay? I agree that it is not a good example, but you have to accept that legally it is correct. So, that is complete graph. On. One can always draw a complete graph on any number of vertices actually. So, complete graph on 5 vertices which will of course, look more complicated. Let us stick to the world of uh, simple graphs. So, from this point on, if I do not uh, say it that way, let us assume that I am talking only of simple graphs. So, unless stated otherwise, we talk of, compl of simple graphs only. That number n incidentally is called the order, order of the graph. Order refers to the number of vertices. simple graph graph and its complement. For example, that graph has 4 vertices, 4 edges. How would the complement of that graph look like?
it is just a different drawing therefore, we do not distinguish between them all right. Complement of a complete graph is called a null graph. So, how many edges does a null graph have? There are no edges. H set is empty. H set for a null graph is empty. You may have 100 vertices with no edges at all, absolutely no edges between vertices. Again, as friend Ray <laughs> rightly said, what is the use of such kinds of examples? Well, legally, one is uh, one has to <laughs> look at all such kinds of things. This per se by themselves they are not interesting that is very clear, but such kinds of things may occur inside something okay, which they do. So, I should I should make provision for these definitions beforehand. <coughs> In general, if I have a graph on n vertices, and if it has as many as m edges, how many edges would the complement have? Yeah, n c 2 minus m, is it clear? Yeah, because the total has, it has to pure arithmetic, it has to add up to n choose 2 because every pair of distinct vertices is either an edge in the graph or in the complement, but not both. Therefore, the total must come to n choose 2. This also suggests that a good way of looking at simple graphs. Namely, every simple graph sits inside a complete graph. Is that, <laughs> is that clear? every simple graph sort of sits no matter how big or something you can take a complete graph with uh, all the edges drawn then it sits inside that complete graph. So, let us define let us define a subgraph. Okay, for simple graphs, I will <laughs> that function psi that I have been talking about, this is the main point psi of E So, you can view every edge I do not need to label edges now, the point I am making is you can now say that x y is an edge. Okay. Instead of saying that E is an edge, I will say that x y is an edge, the pair x y is an edge that would be quite all right, because we are talking of simple graphs, talking of simple graphs I can just say that x y is an edge. is called a subgraph. Example, what are the subgraphs of, uh, let us take that graph.
that is a subgraph. Yeah. V2 and V3. Yeah, but that is not a There is no V4 here. In, in the original graph, yes, original graph there are edges. It's no, this is perfectly all right. H is a graph. It is a graph with three vertices, V1, V2, V3 and it has only one edge. This is a very, very loose definition. <laughs> in the sense that uh, what kinds of things will not be subgraphs? I am not allowed to make an edge like V1, V3 which is not there. That edge V1, V3 is not there in the original graph. I cannot make new edges. I cannot invent new edges. Other than that almost anything is perfectly all right. Is that clear? So, this is a subgraph. This is also a subgraph. Yeah. So, you are saying that H is a uh, sub, subgraph of G, right? Yeah. So, whatever there in H has to be in G. Yes. I said we, uh, I am sorry, good, <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, <laughs> thank you very much, <laughs> yes, it is good to have vigilant students, thanks a lot, <laughs> yeah, in fact, do not keep uh, doubts in your mind, get them cleared immediately, is that clear, in fact, this, uh, that was quite a big mistake. Yes, I, what I meant was that V prime is a subset of V, E prime is a subset of E. Now, that is a subgraph, that is also a subgraph or I can make things much worse. This is also a subgraph, no edge at all. There is no rule that says that I have to draw that edge. Only requirement for subgraph is that uh, I cannot really introduce extraneous edges that were not there in the graph. V1, V3 was not an edge, so I cannot really put that. I cannot cook up a new edge. <laughs> Other than that, almost anything is acceptable as a subgraph. Now, there is something slightly unpleasant about this definition. So, let us uh, make a slightly bit more specialized definition namely an induced subgraph if the edge vw is in e and vw both are in v prime implies So, with that definition, this is not induced, this is also not induced, that is uh, not induced at all. What is induced
this is uh, this is induced this is induced because the rule is if i take two vertices and they were joined or adjacent in the original graph i have to join them for an induced subgraph which is satisfied here which is satisfied if i draw draw the vertex v3 also then i'll have to draw the edge v2 v3 as well i'll have to do it okay but i don't uh, take the vertex v3 therefore this is this is okay this is induced subgraph this is an induced subgraph spanning subgraph <coughs> if which of uh, those four is a spanning subgraph this is not spanning this is spanning so it's a useless kind of subgraph it is it is a spanning subgraph this is not very good but we have to accept that this is a spanning subgraph this is also spanning because all the four vertices are present there this is not spanning of course because the vertex v4 is not there if you don't insist on having <laughs> induced subgraph this is spanning this subgraph is a spanning subgraph there is something sort of nice about it which is what we'll look at <laughs> in the next few classes this is there is something really nice about it in the sense that it sort of captures everything that that graph has i have deleted one edge of course that edge is are not drawn so this there is no question of this being induced but on the other hand compared to graphs like this which don't capture the things there is something really nice about this or such things are called spanning trees or what are called spanning trees <laughs> of a graph so those are examples of spanning trees i have not defined them or not yet defined them i will not do that in this class it is in this sense that every graph can be viewed every graph on n vertices n vertex set v1 v2 vn you can view it as a subgraph of a complete graph every graph every simple graph is a subgraph of a complete graph is that is that clear this graph c4 is a subgraph of k4 it is a subgraph of just draw all possible edges
Okay, let me now draw some nice uh, graphs for you. I think it's a good idea to do that. This we already called a triangle, like already called a K3, same thing as C3. Though we call this triangle, there is no geometry here. Make sure you understand this quite clearly. This is a nice drawing, that's fine, but uh, <laughs> there is no geometry that is involved. Geometry is helpful, it is certainly helpful, but not essential. That is called a claw. seen the claws of an animal on the feet. <laughs> wow. Dart. Bow tie. Okay, now final one. That's called a bull. Okay, the textbook I would okay. Textbook I would like to follow is the one by West. Introduction to graph theory. Prentice Hall of India. There are several books, uh, this appears the syllabus is made based on this book. Uh, there is a internet downloadable book by Deister, which uh, those who have good internet access can try that. So, you can even download a of a book on graph theory, authors Bondi and Murthy. And this will suffice for our purpose actually the West, book by West is sufficient. If you solve the exercises in book by West, it is quite sufficient. They are of various levels. There are some exercises that are really very easy <laughs> and uh, so that you can build your confidence solving easy exercises. Uh, uh, there are stars that he, in fact, he has uh, given levels of difficulties. 
Okay. On each exercise, there is a level of difficulty that is marked in West Book. So that is a nice part about West Book. <coughs> so general uh, terminology, notations, etc. I'll stick to the book by West. And essentially that to the first four chapters in the book by West. Are there any other questions you want to ask? We are meeting tomorrow. Yeah? Is that, is that right? Yeah. So come with more questions. Thank you.